Oh my god! Do not subscribe to my new channel! Don't you do it! Whatever you do, definitely do not follow the link in the description and watch the first episode about capybaras! Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to the Den of the Drake. Other dragons hoard gold while I hoard internet cringe. Listen, I'm gonna tell you a bit of a secret. Are you ready? Okay, good, here it comes. Dungeons and Dragons is not a well-balanced game, and I don't care. Okay, you could start screaming to the sky while rending your garments now. Yeah, everyone knows that some classes or races are significantly stronger than others, and others are significantly weaker. Looking at you, PHB Ranger and Monk. But honestly, it's not something I like to concern myself with too much. I mean, yeah, it can be annoying when min-maxers set out to try and create a god in D&D, but overall trying to balance Wizards of the Coast's game for them is kind of like pissing into the wind, and ends up with players going through an emotional roller coaster that ends up with them vomiting up the funnel cake that they spent 15 bucks on all over your shirt. It's like buying your kid an Xbox for Christmas and seeing that it comes with a digital copy of Uno before saying, a free game? No child of mine is gonna become a gamer using free handouts, and throwing the thing in the trash and swiftly replacing it with a Game Boy Color. I mean, yeah, you could argue that it still plays video games, but doing that is probably gonna make your kids stop believing in Santa a lot earlier than they would have otherwise. The story I have for you today stars a DM who cannot stand the thought of a player taking advantage of their abilities, and goes on a band spree so over the top that it ends with every class pretty much just becoming the same thing and the hissy fit he throws when his players dare to suggest that they're not having fun. Now, without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right into the horrifying world of r slash RPG horror stories. Enjoy. This week's story comes from Reddit user ZNihilist and is titled, DM throws a tantrum because the entire table isn't happy with the constant banning. Story time. This happened a few months ago, and now you guys can hear about this. DM. Has 14 years of experience DMing. Been doing solely 5e campaigns since it came out, or so we're told. Player 1. Me. Started one year ago playing D&D, running a Sylvan Gloomstalker. Player 2. Been playing D&D for 5 years, running a variant human fiend warlock. Player 3. Been playing D&D for two to three years, running a tiefling school of illusion wizard. Player four, newish player, running a bugbear zealot barbarian. Player five, been playing for five years as well, running an ASMR oathbreaker paladin. The DM presents us with a really cool world setting. TLDR, during a major battle, the party members, who were parts of different factions, are taken away by an unknown force which opens a portal to another world, and the party gets their memory wiped. No one knows who was allied with who, and, skipping a lot here, they decided to work together to find out what happened and if they can reverse whatever this is. P.S. We are starting at level 3. We spent an entire month working with the DM on a way to create the backgrounds for our characters, considering we don't know what our background really is. While the DM really took a 180 degree turn later on, this process actually was pretty cool and everyone enjoyed it. During this month, we spent a lot of time making sure that the classes slash races were approved, etc, etc. With that out of the way, let's get to it. Session 1. Goes just fine. No red flags. Session 2. We have a pretty tough fight with local bandits who were hiding in some expansive underground ruins. In one part of the ruins, I get a great stealth roll due to Umbral Sight. We managed to gain the upper hand on a fight when we were at the end of our rope. For the next 30 minutes, the DM is acting short with me specifically. I used to have a habit of sometimes letting my character do things without really talking it out with the other party members, so till the end of the session I was worried that I was doing that. I sent messages to the other players and they were like, no, you're cool, and you're right, the DM was acting short, we have no idea why. 
So after the session is over, the DM, without leading into it or anything, just sighs and says, Umbral sight is broken, and we need to find a way to fix it. Otherwise, I may just have to ban it. It took me by surprise, since that one fight was the only time where Umbral Sight got into consideration as the section of the ruins we were exploring has plenty of light to negate it. I usually don't argue, but like we spent a month working on the characters, and they went through every part of the character sheet to make sure it works, so why is this surfacing right now? Either way, no way to argue. They said we'll talk about it after the next session, and it just goes away. In the next two weeks, we talk a few times, and basically the crust of the issue is that the DM doesn't want people cheesing fights. Okay, fair enough. But it's not like I was abusing it. It came into effect one time, and it was easily countered by just having light. Even dim light works. Even if it's not there, there is a smell, there is a noise, there is magic, etc, etc. So, from my experience, when a DM starts a sentence with, Blank is so overpowered, I'm gonna need to fix it! The end result really doesn't go well. There was this one game I played in recently where our DM took an issue with Healing Word. For those who don't know, Healing Word is a notoriously broken spell. Because despite not healing all that much, it can be casted from range and as a bonus action. This leads to the party doing an impression of a fraternity house party because everyone will be in a constant state of passing out and waking up again for the entire combat. Basically, you can point at an unconscious party member from 60 feet away and say, Hey, you! Stop dying! And they will proceed to do so. After a particularly gnarly combat session, which we all had a lot of fun with, the DM basically said verbatim what our stories DM said about healing word. We were all a bit confused because A, there was only three of us, and only one of us had it. And B, without it we probably all would have died because the combat was already super grueling for the three of us. So we just kind of shrug our shoulders and say, alright, it's their game, they can do what they want. The next session the DM comes back and says that they have addressed the two most broken parts of Healing Word. Now to cast Healing Word you need to be touching the creature you want to heal, and now it's an action to do so. Does that sound familiar to you? Because if it does, that's because our DM just made a shittier version of Cure Wounds that cost the same and healed less. When a DM sets out to nerf a spell or ability that they think is overpowered, they tend to just look at the spell and say, This and this is overpowered. Delete! Without thinking about what's left behind when the broken aspect is actually removed. This really doesn't feel good for the players, as evidenced by the player who lost Healing Word, feeling like they had gone from being the savior of the party to completely useless, because the shittier Cure Wound spell we got now was the only healing that we had at our disposal. When faced with a situation where something is overpowered in the game, it's best to ask yourself two things. Can I adapt the world around the party so that the overpowered thing becomes less overpowered? Maybe after fighting the same type of enemy over and over again, that enemy's faction gets smart and creates a device that counters healing word. And now the party has to kill the bad guy who is holding it before they can use that spell. I don't know, I'm just spitballing here. The second question you gotta ask is, is this overpowered ability affecting anyone's enjoyment of the game? Like I said before, me and the rest of the party were having a blast despite Healing Word apparently making the encounter worse. We thought that we were hanging on by a thread the entire time. If the DM had just sat us down and asked us what we thought about Healing Word, maybe he could have made a better decision instead of just nerfing it and making us waste time shopping for healing items that will do just the exact same thing anyway. To be perfectly honest, most of the time, your DM is not going to be the master at game balance that they think they are. And it's going to be better for everyone if you address gameplay problems like you do with any other problem in D&D. As a team. Huh? Session 3. With the issue of Umbral Sight in mind, I tried my best to always give myself reasons why I shouldn't bring it up. I tried making it very limited when I think I could use it. DM was acting fine. Then during a fight with the leader of the bandits who turns out to be a fiend, the paladin crits on a smite. To be clear, you state you are going to smite before you roll. 
and rolls really lucky on a few of the dice, and takes the bandit boss down to zero HP. The fight was pretty tough, and we already had one person down and the rest between a quarter to two thirds HP left. And to anyone following, to no one's surprise, the DM goes quiet and starts getting short with the paladin. At the end of the session, now the same thing happens. The DM, without leading up to it, just states that the paladin's crits are overpowered, and we may need to remove the extra d8 on the undead slash fiends, and maybe keep crits to the melee attacks. A few days later, he comes back with the following ruling. Umbral Sight. 1. I get to keep it, but to get the benefit, I must first roll a hard stealth check, so 20 plus. 2. Every time we enter a new room, a new roll is needed. Mind you, there was only one dark room in three sessions so far. 3. I am not allowed to get past without a trace. Paladin Smite. 1. No additional damage dice for Fiend or Undead. 2. Bans Upgraded Smite, meaning it always has to be 2d8, no matter what spell level is used. 3. Bans Crits on Smite. Paladin guy gets pretty upset, and the entire table is like, dude, what the fuck? Why are you going so hard on these things? No answer. Later, one of three other players reaches out to the DM, and apparently we picked OP classes, and it is ruining his setting and world. I think all five of us were pretty stunned. The Paladin sends a message to the DM on behalf of the entire group that a lot of us put quite a bit of thought into these characters, and it's a bit unfair for us to get these restrictions after the DM did a thorough back and forth with us before session one. And we'd like to maybe try to either roll new characters or talk about these issues. DM replies that we can talk about it after session four. Last session, AKA session four. We talk a few minutes before the start of the session, and the DM promises that he won't leave voice channel tonight until we reach a compromise that satisfies everyone. Midway through this session, we are inside a castle with a floor falling around us. A few enemies on some platforms, too. The bugbear barbarian has a reach of 15 feet on his turns, as he has a glaive that can extend his reach by 5 feet. So on one occasion, he positions himself in a way that can reach one powerful enemy and focuses on it. Next turn, the enemy moves around. The barbarian follows and does the same thing. Suddenly, the DM pauses the session, tells the barbarian that for this night, he cannot extend his reach, and his glaive can't reach beyond five feet. So basically neuter both the race and the weapon. At this point, I decided that this was my last session. There was no reasoning with whatever this is, but one by one the others take turns telling him that this isn't fun with the constant banning of every single perk and mechanic, that there are a million ways to deal with these perceived issues, and banning every little thing isn't fun anymore. This isn't supposed to be torturous, after all. He just explodes and goes on a tirade about how every single one of us can't help ourselves, but to min-max every little aspect of our characters. How he can't run a campaign without someone power gaming, then goes on a tirade about how difficult it is to run a campaign without people ruining the fun. Five people disconnect, five people leave the server, and five people ban one person. I'm not sure what he expected. Us not using the mechanics of the game? How this guy ran a D&D campaign is beyond me. What's next? Banning putting points in charisma because it gives you a higher persuasion check? TLDR. DM can't handle anything that makes any class slash race distinctive. End of story. Oh boy, it sounds to me like this DM just wanted to run a humans only campaign where everyone is just wearing a different hat. Unfortunately, this is a trap that newbie DMs find themselves ensnared in all too often. When presented with a problem that they perceive to threaten their game, they use their godlike power to mash the delete button to make the problem go away. This can lead to frustration as evidenced by the story here. Because in what world does the deletion of everything that could potentially make you feel special in a game of make-believe add to the fun that people might be having? If I wanted to feel like a non-special nobody, I'd go visit my parents for a weekend. The whole point of a role-playing game is that you get to be a character that's nothing like the way you are in real life. Wearing a new face is fun. 
And if you stop letting people do that in a pretend game, well, that's how you get people like Ed Gein. And on that happy note, how about we take a look at this week's Gallery of the Drake. This week's fan art comes from viewer Dr. Liam, who has once again created pixel art of one of the crowning pieces of my personal arsenal. But it leaves an important question. Why would a dragon need a flamethrower? <laughs> <laughs> Drake, are you done yet? Dancing with the Stars is on and I don't want to miss. Holy crap, what did you do to the kitchen? You've obviously never had a Hot Pocket that's scalding on the outside and cold on the inside. It's a fate worse than death. Yeah, but there's no Hot Pocket left, Drake. War is hell. Living with you is hell. Thank you again, Dr. Liam, for submitting your art. If you'd like to see your fan art featured in Gallery of the Drake, be sure to send it to the email in my About section. Fan art is my favorite part of doing YouTube, and it means the world to me that I can inspire artists like you to create artwork like this. With the story over and artwork displayed, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you feel like supporting the channel further, my Patreon and merchandise links are in the description. I would like to thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you next time in the Den of the Drake.